fucking night, man. My name is Codex. This is Don't Flop. I was here for the relaunch. What a fucking night. You enjoyed it? Yeah! My name is Greeley. Shout outs to the sponsors VC Clothing, OzHipHopShop.com, Concrete Jungle Trading, and Kimura Liqueur. Yes! Yeah! On my right, representing Taz Motherfucking Mania, introduce yeah. yourself. Dundee, motherfuckers, what's good, Melbourne? Yeah! All the way from the UK, introduce yourself. Shuffle T, do you have insurance? Let's fucking go! Yeah! Yeah! Thumbs clip, Shuffle's gonna go first. <laughs> Alright! Yeah, I'm in from the UK! Yeah! Thank fuck. <laughs> nah, you react to me. You could have gone enthusiastically, have just fucking booed me massively. <laughs> I'm in from the UK. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That was a long, protracted flight. I read War and Peace in Latin, backwards, twice. You don't know the shit I went through to battle you. Halfway into the flight, we ran out of packaged food. But I maintain we did what we had to do when we ate that member of the cabin crew. Halfway into eating his legs, a woman from the back came through like, I found some extra sandwich. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I fucking bored of the flight, I found a guitar and a man and fucking started a band. <laughs> it's all going well, this was part of the plan. We released three albums, they were eating out the palm of our hands. And this is due to creative differences when we started to land. <laughs> Bored of the flight as soon as I fucking boarded the flight. <laughs> Even turned around to fucking talk to a guy. I said, how you doing? He said, well, I turned 40 tonight. I said, congrats. He said, I was fucking born on this flight. <laughs> I got so bored. Watch one of your battles. The fucking Disney sing song. That was the point I shot the pilot like filming a new sitcom. I fucking ripped that spot. Fucking plane out of the sky like I'm King Kong. I don't know if I said it yet, right, but the flight was a bit long. <laughs> it's a miracle I got through customs. <laughs> Fucking miracle that happened. Lad. They said, what brings you to Australia? I said, killing it with rapping. <laughs> I said, how long do you plan your stay? I said, till I'm finished snapping. <laughs> Under occupation, I wrote I was a lyrical assassin. <laughs> thought they might find it funny if they're a fan of my work. They thought they'd carry out a cavity search. <laughs> and I crap now, it hurts. <laughs> but I'm finally here, wasting a full 90 seconds with D now. It probably feels to you kind of like I'm wrenching your teeth out. Talking about how long it took to fly, collect and bring me down because I couldn't think of enough shit for you to try and stretch it to three rounds. Yeah. But I might talk about you being kind of old though. <laughs> <laughs> oh no? <laughs> You're so old though. <laughs> you put the old in old. <laughs> What I, call the old, what I call the olden days, you call the golden age. <laughs> Honestly, man, you're actually double my age. I mean, obviously you're not, but after 40, who cares? It's exactly fucking the same. <laughs> I won't say you're old enough to be my dad, because that's changing the facts. But you are old enough to be a mate of my dad's. Yeah. You could go round to a dinner date at their pad and I'd be like, yeah, that's fine, nothing strange about that. Yeah. He met a gypsy woman who was going to read his fate on his span. She was like, this line can help us tell the age of a man. She read it and then she was kind of taken aback. It just says, you're fucking old, cunt, on the base of his hand. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there because your beady glare and evil stares making me really scared. <laughs> Give it up! Oh, I put the fucking old into old. Can't you get decked in the pelvis, like pull your bloody head in cock and show some respect to your elders? Like, I might put the old in old, but. 
Who cares, you bloody weird meth head? <laughs> Clan's battle team was like 60. So I've still got a couple years left yet. <laughs> so, here he is. The pretty boy of battle rap. Versus Shuffle T. <laughs> <laughs> You think, you think you're the real pretty boy of Battle Rap? Bro, in your fucking dreams. <laughs> Why don't you have another geese? Can I'm such an utter beast that wants to leave the stage tonight, the females will all flood to me, them sluts will be a hundred deep just begging for my company. So when you go home alone to your hotel and beat your fucking meat, that'll be the only time tonight that you'll be touching deep. <laughs> <laughs> I am the true pretty boy of Battle Rap. <laughs> You just bit my style, you Stephen Cockhead. <laughs> when I walked into the venue, you could tell that he was astonished just to see the body of such a sleek Adonis looking more cruder than an Indonesian province got my blue steel Tigra pop. And to be completely honest, if I ever needed dollars, I could have been a model. But I didn't... <laughs> real talk, real talk, real talk. To be completely honest, if I ever needed dollars, I could have been a model. But I didn't want to take the easy option. I got bitches throwing books at me like they kicking me out the house because because I cheated on him. <laughs> well, shuffle T's a grommet. Hey, know why he don't need to wear a franger with the horse he has sex with? Because his dress sense alone is a form of protection. <laughs> and I only call in a question all the investments because with the wardrobe you're dressed in, I'm sort of suspecting that you have a more than extensive fedora collection. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shaf. <laughs> I mean, I, I tend to get a bit carried away with stuff. But it's hard, you know? Once I start talking about how I'm an insanely buff Tasmanian stub with a facial structure lady's love. <laughs> I almost forgot to say to you, Welcome to Australia, Captain. <laughs> I'm sure you've probably heard a couple stories about our nation, bruv. You're up against a whole heap of gnarly shit so no one can guarantee your safety, cuz. But I, I guess you laugh in the face of danger, huh? Well, it's almost like you've tried to put yourself in the worst possible situation, but it's between the bipolar Melbourne weather and the cancer-causing rays of sun, the array of rough and shady pubs, the roaming packs of crazy drunks, the racist munted wasted thugs, sharks and spiders, fake snakes and bugs, mm. plus now you're face to face with dunce, so it's pretty safe to say you're fucked. <laughs> Tell me I got shuffle tea. Man, I could not help but shuffle. <laughs> you travelled halfway around the globe just to put yourself in a world of trouble. I could clip him in his chin just to watch his fucking helmet buckle, see his feet slide out from under him. Now you really came to Melbourne shuffle. <laughs> and I know, I know, I tell all of my opponents, I'll punch him. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'm trying to make a change and take a stand, lad. I've got to set an example. I'm a father now. Maybe one day I'll be a granddad. Yeah. So as a testament to me stopping all this talk of violence in my damn raps, just this afternoon, I went out and got myself a new hand tat. And if you think I only punched him in the arm because I can, just to put it over the cunt, well then you can't understand. This is that circle game shit. Yeah. And that's all part of the plan. I got this motherfucking round in the palm of my hand. Motherfucker just deaded my wing. <laughs> <laughs> Just let the guy win, he's fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Done? Do you not get so fucking tired of being rigid and tensed up? Sticking your chest into your vest in a defense puff? You got a tattoo for each of the women you've death punched, just like your step. <laughs> You got a tattoo for each of the women you've death punched. It's like your steroids are on steroids. It's pretty intense stuff. <laughs> of course you get reaction in ours. It's a piece of pie like a pizza slice. People tried to warn me before I took this battle to seek advice. They said, it's not that the Aussie scene has died. It's just seeming like it needs some life. 
So I'm sure that's not true. Who's your best battle buddy? They're probably Dundee. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the scene has died. <laughs> about that shit in the UK, the audience wouldn't sound so wild. Because Dunn's ten years behind, we grew out those styles. We wouldn't even save your battle to the download file. You would spit your best round and the crowd goes mild. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the only reason I'm glad that I'm from England. Huh? Sorry. That's not the re- I don't know what I wanted to hear. That's not the only reason I'm glad that I'm from England. Because English people aren't constantly threatened by wildlife, that's going to kill them. <laughs> I'm saying, if you win, I don't cry with my bloody eyes in sorrow. I'm just satisfied with being the least likely to fucking die tomorrow. <laughs> like you go out drinking with the boys on a late night, you're rowdy as fuck, your voices are raised high, you put your foot down on the field because the soil's a safe site, and then boom, right there, poisonous snake bite. <laughs> <laughs> Or you're just in your house. You expect that you're safe. You've checked and surveyed and inspected the place. There's no sign of any fucking venomous snakes. Then, oh no, spider bite, dead in a day. (laughs) I'm from the UK. Die from a spider or a huge snake. I'm more likely to die from a toothache, drown in tea, or somehow suffocate inside of my duvet. It's like fucking cane toads. Where I'm from, toads are a joke. You kick a toad in the ass. We all go over and laugh at how fucking hopeless they are. Slap a toad in its stupid face. They cause nobody harm. Here, they fucking kill your dogs by eroding their heart. (laughs) It's fucking real shit. (laughs) Crocodiles and tarantulas? That's making me sick. Dinosaurs and giant spiders? Are you taking the piss? (laughs) For the first 20 years of my life, I thought they were a myth, and now I'm literally in the fucking place they exist. (laughs) So basically, Mick, and I'll say this to Chris, you're gonna have to pay me a quid for taking the win. Just save me from shit. I'm, I'm constantly paranoid of the cane toads, the ticks, the snails, the sticks, the snakes and the fish, all the Australian shit. It's a dangerous mix. Just take me to his safe in the crib, and maybe I'll live. (laughs) And I haven't insulted you much this round. Just been stupidity done. And you're probably thinking if you diss me, then you've instantly won. I assure you, all of this is just a cute Englishman stunt, and though I haven't said it enough yet, I do think you're a cunt. I don't care if you are classically trained in theatrical plays. <laughs> I don't care if you got a high distinction in speech and drama back in the day. <laughs> I don't care if your talent was naturally made for the cabaret game and you get a standing ovation when you do Hamlet on stage. Because <laughs> I guess you're a chameleon of battle rapping away. How you can drastically change your true colours through a gamut of shades. Like, one minute you're dropping gun bars in a gangster display. Next minute saying you love the cock like you have to be gay. So I'm surprised that when you rocked up to this battle today that you didn't blacken your face and bring an Aboriginal flag to the stage. And as the fallout on Twitter grows and Briggs will go attacking this fake with some (laughs) rational debate, Shuffle casually say it's relax, it's okay. It's not actually racist, I'm just getting into character, right? Come round here, coming round here, mate. <laughs> Fuck the Earl Grey tea you sipping cups and the warm beer that you drink in pubs. Stop being a whinge and bloody prick for once and shut the fuck up about the cricket, bruv. Because <laughs> if there's two things in this world that absolutely shit me shuff, it's people are intolerant of other people's cultures and bloody English cunts. <laughs> When I heard that England left the EU and what the Brits had just started and the repercussions of the Brexit and what it did to these bastards and the fact it means that a lot more pommies will be living in hardship I fucking cracked open a VB and pissed myself laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Up until then, the Aussie dollar fared pretty poorly to the pound. You had one of the world's strongest currencies and all of you were proud. So the Brexit fucked that up, the bank froze all of your accounts and your economy in all its glory started falling to the ground. But see, when I heard that shit, mate, I was walking on a cloud. Like, oh my, oh my Christmases had come at once. It was as awesome as it sounds. Because now when I go to England in December, I'll be balling up in stout. And I don't mean, I don't mean buying bottles of French champagnes so I can pour a couple out. 
Just means if I go into a pub in London and I order me a stout, I won't have to put a second mortgage on my house just to afford the frickin' round. <laughs> I don't hate all English cunts. That's, that's too broad of a statement. I just find that Brexit shit fucking hilarious before you go calling me racist. Now you cunts drop the EU and they all call it a failure while we just dropped the AU, started calling it Australia. <laughs> If Tassie ever got told to fuck off by our Victorian neighbours, yep. shit, we'd bring boatloads of inbred bogans to your shores and invade <laughs> so, so the next time Shuffle flies in in Melbourne Airport, he'll be sure to embrace it when he sees a big sign that says, Welcome to Far Northern Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> The UK is still nearly as livable. You won't be allowed there. <laughs> Nothing to do with Brexit, you're just clearly a criminal. <laughs> now I heard it was winter in Australia. So I started packing some sweaters, a coat made out of Italian leather and an umbrella to make sure I wasn't caught out by the lack of good weather. <laughs> Then I remembered, I'm from fucking England. <laughs> Turns out I'm not the most practical dresser. I've been sweating like Roll Paris standing together with an under 13 year old family member. <laughs> Iggy Azalea look like a national treasure. <laughs> and that's done spelled D with a capital letter, because what, are you 38 or something? You've been rapping forever. You've been going for like 20 years and you haven't got better. What do you think life begins at 40 applies to your rapping endeavors? <laughs> do you think your career is just going to suddenly fucking magic together? 50 isn't the age of Amtop's average member. So you're not, so not going to be able to handle the pressure and you can mark my words like a language professor. I'm like a lion and fucking Jesus got sandwiched together. <laughs> You're like a shit rapper and an even shitter rapper got mashed in a blender. <laughs> We're about to see him collapse in the center. It'll be like watching Michael J. Fox practice in Jenga. <laughs> Every celebrity I can think of ever. You'll get slammed in the cellar. Strangled, dismembered, stabbed in the chest and shackled in fetters. I came to Australia to give these people a clash to remember and this average contender doesn't match my agenda. Can I remember the next bit? Can I remember? Yes, I can. I can. I remember. <laughs> I'd let you off with a warning like a traffic inspector. But you got a head I want to take off and I'm an avid collector. <laughs> I'd let you go back to your crackling embers unless you try to bite the hand that feeds you like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> and by the way, Dundee? Least original name for an Aussie battler ever. <laughs> you definitely need to get better to me. The letter's a D because getting a D is the cleverest he could ever achieve. It begs belief. <laughs> so unintelligent he finds picture books too high a level to read. <laughs> his wife comes home and sees him watching Sesame Street, but it's not for his daughter, she's in bed and asleep. He's just trying to get to grips with his alphabet in the week and keeps on getting fucking stuck at LMNOP. <laughs> I keep going, but you're angry and you're hencher than me. <laughs> but fuck it, the battle's pretty much over. So tomorrow afternoon, me and you go get a barbecue. Hang out with a fucking cask of goon. I'll buy you a fucking lager too without you even me asking to. <laughs> sort of fucking... I thought... I thought Foster's was popular out here and everyone drinks it but you hardly do. I'll come back to fucking Australia in a couple years, go to Taz and then Darwin too and we can cuddle up like koalas do. <laughs>
I'll let you blow my didgeridoo. <laughs> Something, something, kangaroo. <laughs> um, boomerang backwards is gnaramoob. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it! It's over, it's crystal clear, let's disappear, go drink a beer and argue over who has the shittest beard. <laughs> Fucking lucky you weren't mean about my wife and daughter. <laughs> or you can get punched in the jaw, and it ain't even me you gotta worry about. It's me fucking mother in law. <laughs> she got a sixth sense. She'll just know if you're talking any kind of shit about her girls, bruh, and appear on this stage out of thin air and fucking put you up on World Star. True story. True story. True story. True story. Now, if you didn't know, shuffle. Tad obsessed with battle rap. Tad. And he's a passionate guy. He tries to bring battling into nearly every facet he finds. He'll, he'll just walk up in the street to the first random he spies, like round one on Shuffle T, starts attacking with Brian. <laughs> so say what you will about Shuffle. Need a battling type. I mean, next to him, I wouldn't even really know what battling's like. What's it like, bro? You do a battle a day and a fucking battle a night. Every conversation you have is a battle of minds. Codex ain't need to pay an airline when you travel to Sky. Shit, you just rocked up at the service desk and battled for flights. Plus you, <laughs> plus you literally, you literally went to a wedding when they were getting married and tried to fucking battle the groom and then battle the bride. See? <laughs> True shit. I remember my wedding day. <laughs> One of my happiest times. But if some fuckwit rocked up on that spectacular night and tried to battle me right, then took some jabs at my wife, I'd fucking pull out a blade like cunt battle a knife until he <laughs> until he's lying on a journey trying to battle for life. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fucking ruin my wedding, cunt. <laughs> so I guess we both take battling pretty serious. But homie, you in a different zone. So you'll get tatted up with my family's names and fallen soldiers in the ink I chose, where you get tatted up with slow it downs, dizzes jokes, clips his quotes and got a back piece of hollow to Don half naked in a suspicious pose. <laughs> he, he probably answers with talk to him anytime someone calls this dickhead's phone. Uh. You got Don DeMarco's for your message sound and sprat for your ringing tone. <laughs> I'm, I'm the type to rub one out to a big titted hoe that's getting boned. You the type to rub one out to a fucking video of Chilla Jones. You identify as barsexual. You identify as barsexual. That's what that faggotry is called, cunt. Trying to pass it off as just a passion when in reality it's more but. See, my greatest wish in life is the one that I'll be having for my daughter so for any dream she ever had, her daddy can support her. Well, your greatest wish in life ain't for your loved ones or your family at all, bruv. Your greatest wish in life is that they make Lyrical into a category on Pornhub. <laughs> you bloody wordplay finger and muppet. <laughs> If you saw me oh. watching the Manners BK battle making some spastic faces, it's because I think their rap's amazing. If you saw him watching that battle making some spastic faces, it was premature ejaculation. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I know this lad's a flamer, because he masturbates the rap from Vega. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just giving you this battle as a massive favour and you can chuck him in the wank bank for later. <laughs> So, I'm real glad you made the trek to this event and you're here, Shuff. But saying you'll beat me is say like saying we both have exceptional beards, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the fucking best up in here, so I'm respecting a beard. Done! So respect where respect is due. Go, Go and get me a beard, cunt! <laughs> Good shit. I'm trying to take it back the way that it used to be I did it for the love, now I hate this shit truthfully So I asked what would James say and think Maybe all my passion died the same day as him 
Or maybe that Hennessy got the best of me Fucked up, that Hennessy got the best of me Punch drunk, that Hennessy got the best of me Shit, maybe I oughta let her be Last time that I trust a bitch, the last time that I love a bitch, whoa Last time that I trust a bitch, the last time that I love a bitch, whoa If you call yourself a dreamer, put your drink in the sky Let's have a toast to believers who be living their life, I said how much your time is over, I ain't got no time for talking Fuck a sky for limit, I'm high off a life and I'm in orbit Man, I'ma rock the damn planet like I'm Dr. Manhattan And I'm chopping plant matter while in Rotterdam Wrapping up a proper gram ashing in your shoddy bandwagon When I stop and ransack it Booking shows in the Buckingham Palace All my gigs are mega man like I bust a hand cannonball and hardcore